You know, sometimes I like to go back in time and watch old films from the 50s. It's almost like a time capsule of society before the world completely lost its mind. And look, I'm not saying there weren't problems back then or there wasn't really screwed up things that were acceptable back then, you know, in, in the way people were treated. I'm not saying that. But I got to say there was a certain standard with the way you presented yourself, you know, at least in public. You know, it just, that just seems to really be lost today. There's this awesome YouTube channel I got to shout out here. It's uh, NASS is, is the name of the channel where the guy, he takes, he takes old footage from the 50s and, and even stuff going back to the 20s and he redigitizes and colors them and it looks awesome. But what's really captivating about it is that it's unedited footage of people just filming a drive around town. Like, like someone will have a camera pointed out the back window just filming cars and people going by. And I'm telling you, if you watch one of these, it really takes you back in time. This is, this is the closest thing we've got next to a time machine. I mean, you get to see how people presented themselves back then. I watched so many of these. And, and literally, every person you see walking by is dressed up. I mean, even if you were poor, you, you still wore your best outfit. Like even if you had one suit or a button-up shirt, that's what you wore when you went out. You didn't see people grocery shopping in their pajamas like you see now. There was a community standard. People cared about how they presented themselves. How did we lose that? Nobody was twerking in front of Zippy's diner. <laughs> Could you imagine? I don't even think twerking existed. I mean, yeah, there's always been racy photos, Playboy and all that, but, but not out in public where people eat. Where's the footage of that? You fast forward to 2022, you got literally, you got children twerking in Times Square in New York City. I mean, there's literally a small child twerking with a grown woman cheering her on with a crowd of people around the kid watching i mean this is a this i mean this is the fall of an empire here imagine a grown woman egging on a three-year-old to do this in front of beanie's diner back in 1952 while people are eating the entire place would be in shock the workers would come out, push the woman off the property. Moms would come running out, scooping the kid up. The cops would be called. It'd be in the paper the next day. They would list the family name of the woman who allowed this. I mean, the people would be writing letters to the media, outraged. Her family wouldn't even be able to show their face around town. I mean, they'd have to move. Everyone would be whispering, ooh, that's the family of the lady who was making the kid do perverted things in front of the diner. Yeah, look at them. Now we just have people crowded around watching it happen like it's some sort of street performance. Like a, like a juggler or a guy riding a unicycle. Then you got the people walking by who know this is an atrocity. They know this is an atrocity and they just go, well, it's not my place to say anything. Don't get involved. And that's the mindset that causes this to continue. It normalizes it because the people doing this stuff know there's no consequences. These parents should be publicly shamed, offline and online. But see, the problem is when you speak up about this stuff, at least on social media, you get axed. They take your stuff down. I mean, I've been documenting that happening to, happen to me for the past two years. <laughs> 